Hey guys, uh, I'm Brendan Baldwin. I'm a software engineer with the uh, Lit and Web Components team. And for the last several months, I've been focusing my attention on the Virtualizer project, which is the latest and most elegant iteration in a long lineage of DOM virtualization projects. Um, I want to just uh, go briefly over what problem we're trying to solve, give you an example, and then show you our solution, um, and then dive deep into a little, a little of the extra features. And then what are some of the special things, uh, the considerations, and move forward. So here we are. So what's the problem? Um, virtualizer means to actually solve a few different problem areas, but I'm going to oversimplify for this talk and focus on one and just talk about the DOM, or rather, too much DOM. Um, what do I mean by that? I mean, the DOM is great. It enables us to define and interact with all the bits of our page and the entire foundation of the interface of the web and all that. But uh, every single element and bit of text and comments and white space is all represented in a big, you know, a uh, big data structure we refer to as the DOM. And some nodes of that are cheap, white space, text, comments, uh, divs. And then some get heavier because there's more information like audio and, and image data and iframes and that kind of thing. Um, the bigger your DOM gets, the more expensive it is, obviously, to find things. Query selectors take longer. You have to iterate over more stuff. But the real impact of having lots and lots of, of nodes in your DOM is Anytime something in your DOM changes, the browser has to recalculate layout and style, what's typically referred to as a reflow. And so when your document represents large collections of things, like messages or products in a catalog, news articles, search results, whatever, you're going to have a proportionally large amount of nodes in your DOM. And you get those higher layout and reflow costs, and that starts to interact and compete with other performance costs and application memory consumption and transitive effects. and then there comes a the point for any app where if you get the, too many nodes in your DOM, you're going to have noticeable effects, and they're hard to diagnose. And then maybe you're not even testing your users' real-world collection sizes. And anyway, stuff doesn't doesn't work and feel right. And we tend to design around this intuitively, right? We uh, try to not overload our interface, so we come up with different metaphors. Uh, what can you do? You can paginate, right? But it's 2022. There's a better option, right? Um, so before I get into how that works, just let's briefly talk about what is too much. Um, what are, uh, how many nodes are too many nodes? Lighthouse, uh, which is kind of the sort of standard way of measuring your web app's performance. It has guidelines that say, hey, if you got 800 nodes in your DOM, that's too much. 1,400 nodes, I'm going to scream at you. Um, but the most important piece of advice that it gives, the most important guideline is it says, if you have any parent node that has 60 or more child nodes, um, it's basically saying your list is too big. Find another way. So let's look at an example. Here's a large collection rendering problem. Uh, simple example here is a, a list of photos, right? We've got a, a, a thousand some odd photos. We want to render them to the page. Um, obviously, there's going to be some expense there. So we give an array of photos to our custom element here. You you can see this is our basic photo list custom element. It's very simple. It has a photos array, and we're going to go ahead and emit each one of them as an image tag. This is the simplest possible <laughs> example I could do. Um, so that's a 1,000 image tags on the page. Uh, in a real app, you'd probably have more than just image tags. You'd probably have you know, divs around it for like a label, and maybe you've got a little you know, kebab menu for doing things with the, uh, the uh, image when you download it or whatever. So you're going to have a lot more stuff in your DOM than just the 1,000 image tags. You're going to have maybe 10,000 tags or something. Um, so that's a lot of data, uh, data and requests also to the images across the network that you're going to be doing. Um, here's just an example. I've gone ahead and rendered it. And you can see in DevTools, I'm just going to scroll through there the uh, actual rendered um, image tags. And OK, so this is what we're trying to avoid, right? So how do we avoid this? Solution. <laughs> uh, Here's your solution. Go ahead and install Virtualizer. And this is just an example of what it looks like. It's a custom element, lit Virtualizer. You define the items that you're going to render, and then you define a little template to render each item. It's a really simple interface. Uh, you can probably get up and started in about a minute. Um, the premise is you don't have to render everything. You don't have to render every photo. We're only showing some on the screen at any given time. Um, what if we just rendered the ones that are actually visible? and 
make sure that the scroll bars and everything else act as if we did render everything so that it feels natural. Um, here's just sort of a, a very advanced rendering that I did earlier today to, to show you what um, lit virtualizer is. Here you can see lit virtualizer. It's an it's an element. It's a container. Um, all these are the uh, the items that we're rendering. Um, but what lit virtualizer actually does is it goes ahead and it only renders the things that are going to be in view in the viewport. It still keeps its size as a container as if it was rendering all the things, but it's only going to show you the things that you could see. So as you scroll around, it's going to change out those items so that you can feel like you're looking at a giant collection. Um, so I'm just going to show you briefly how to convert your application if you already have large large collections. Uh, it's a multi-step process. The first thing you got to do, um, find out what you're doing to render. You're probably using a repeat, right? Here's your repeat. Um, you're going to swap that out, and you're going to put a virtualizer instead of a repeat. And then step three is, no, actually, that's it. That's all you really have to do. Um, Assuming you don't have a bunch of edge case stuff, this is going to handle most of the circumstances where you're rendering a collection of things. Um, so here's just a live example uh, that I recorded, and it's no longer live, where you can actually see I'm scrolling through the items. And in DevTools, it represents in purple um, those DOM nodes that it's actually adding and removing. Uh, so as we're scrolling, you can see it's actually inserting and, and uh, deleting DOM nodes. Um, so that's pretty cool, because that means now we uh, have a fixed Whoops, sorry. We have a fixed number of elements being rendered at any given time. Instead of the 1,000, we actually have um, 12, right? So that's cool. That reduces the number of uh, things we have in the DOM at any given time. Our reflows are going to be cheaper. We're only making 24 requests for images on that first load. Um, and uh, and the other cool thing about that is you don't have to implement anything special for lazy loading image behavior, right? So it's like you get this extra free. Uh, benefit. Um, so how does this actually work? Uh, well, uh, what Virtualizer does is it'll it'll essentially, by default, it's going to estimate how big it would be if all of its children children were rendered. And it does that by looking at the children that it actually will render in the in the first set. And as it it goes ahead and makes that estimate, it'll adjust uh, adjust its its awareness of how big it should be and um, make changes to uh, to its estimate as you scroll through. So it can get a, a good understanding of your document set. And, and your scroll bars will feel real as you're as you're moving around. Um, uh, it's also very responsive. If you zoom or increase your text size or resize your browser or frame size, or or if, if any of the ch child nodes themselves change their size because of some, uh, some other thing that has nothing to do with uh, virtualizer, um, it's going to go ahead and react and adjust all of its concepts of what should be in view um, in real time. So it'll feel just like a regular uh, rendered collection. Um, it's the children, the child nodes that it's rendering remain in the light DOM. So you don't have to do anything special to style them. Um, and it'll automatically add and remove them based on whether they're actually deemed to be in range of view. Um, and it already understands what items are to the elements that are rendered. So you don't have to think about creating keys for them like you might with repeat. Um, it's just kind of a, a, a freebie. So getting into um, the features for, uh, for this product, there are some other things that you can do. Like what if you have um, a horizontal collection, right? Uh, by default, you know, your block level elements are going to render vertically. Virtualizer has to understand that you're going to scroll horizontally so it can understand things. So um, you're going to give it uh, what's called a layout. Um, by default, it uses a layout called flow. That's where you can kind of give it anything, and it'll just do the standard vertical um, arrangement. But you can tell uh, flow to say, hey, I want to use a, uh, ver a horizontal orientation. So you can go ahead and import uh, the flow layout and give it a direction. And I'm saying I'm going to render this uh, horizontally. And then it'll just work there, too. Um, in addition to you know changes uh, configurations for flow layout, we have support other layouts. Um, there's a notion of a grid layout. The idea being instead of having to estimate and figure out how big your child nodes are going to be and adjusting over time, you could just es establish up front a fixed item height and width, and then you can avoid all those uh, all those additional calculations and and uh, churn. 
Um, we're also uh, going to be launching a masonry layout soon, which um, gives you a little more flexibility if you have you know various aspect ratios, but you want to have them more arranged instead of one at a time uh, on top of each other. And you know we want to be able to support user-defined layouts too, but uh, we really want to get the API stable enough so that we're not making you constantly have to rethink how you uh, code them. So that's that's coming. We're we're looking hard at that. Um, and so, in addition to other kinds, uh, other layouts, there's other behaviors that people are familiar with when they're using virtual scrolling kinds of libraries. Like, what about the infinite scrolling solution? Or what if you want to have uh, you know on-demand uh, data loading for certain items? Virtualizer is really focused on being a simple, primitive uh, thing that's only concerned about pretending to be a fully rendered collection and only rendering things in view. That's what it's focused on. And if you want to be able to do things like infinite scrolling or do on-demand data loading for things that come in range, um, we make that uh, very easy. And to build a component on top of that that does infinite scrolling is just a matter of hooking into our event system. So Virtualizer will emit two different kinds of events. There's a visibility changed event, um, which is we send an event when new nodes show up in the viewport or disappear from the viewport anytime that range changes. Um, then there's a range changed event, uh, which similarly, Virtualizer, in addition to rendering things directly in the viewport, it has a little bit of an overhang, we call it, where before and after the visible area, it's going to render some pre-render some content so that the scrolling feels naturally. You're not constantly scrolling into blank space. And these events just give you the first and last uh, item index um, that are now in those uh, those various ranges that you care about. And then once you know those, you, it's very easy to add logic to do things like go ahead and request the new items for the infinite scroll or or request additional data for um, for your items to display. And uh, another feature that we have is this notion of a scroller. Um, the premise is here, by default, you know how Virtualizer is going to basically be that big uh, element that pretends to be containing a whole collection. Well, sometimes you just want a little viewport that you can scroll around in. If you if you give it the scroller attribute, then basically what you get is instead of a giant uh, collection item that um, that it lives inside another viewport, lit virtualizer will itself be a little viewport, and you can style its width and height, and then just scroll around to see the items in it. And that can be really convenient if you're building a, a little list of things to browse. <clears throat> uh, we also provide a directive. Um, which is identical to the lit virtualizer custom element. Uh, you might want to use this if you were, let's say, doing something inside um, something that semantically didn't work to have a lit virtualizer element in it, like ULs and, and LI tags. Um, or it's otherwise uh, a situation where you don't want to bring in the lit element base class um, and you just want to use the virtualization uh, capability. You can keep your imports smaller that way. Um, OK, so just a couple other things to keep in mind. You're virtualizing now. Uh, not everything in the world is exactly the same when you virtualize. Obviously, you're going to be missing some DOM nodes that might have been there previously. So uh, when you're testing, um, you have to be uh, aware of how big your viewport is. Uh, if you've got headless browsers firing up for your integration tests and things, make sure you know how big they are, because Virtualizer cares. And so your, your test results are going to be different if you're expecting certain things to be in view. Um, and you know they can't just assume that everything's going to be rendered to the DOM. So if you're looking for application state to be reflected in DOM, just be aware you're really going to have to focus your tests on what's actually going to be visible. Um, also, because there are little micro adjustments that happen very quickly in Virtualizer as it's figuring out where things are going or how much to render, um, you need to wait until it's done figuring those things out before you test to, that things are viewable. Um, they happen before paint, but they're going to not necessarily happen in your testing cycle. So we have a little promise you can await. Um, it's called a layout complete. And when, when that resolves, that just means everything's done. So it makes testing very simple to make sure that everything's in place before you assert. Um, OK. Uh, that was it. Yeah. So, so to recap. Um, oh, I'm sorry. That's, I couldn't see my, my slide. Uh, there's one other uh, thing to note. Because things in your application are not always going to be all on the page, if you are uh, trying to support users who would expect to be able to find using their native browser find feature, you're probably going to have to give them some affordance to do uh, the same. We have a very simple uh, API to scroll an item into view. So if you know the index of an item because your, uh, you know, your little application find feature has identified it, it's very easy to tell Virtualizer, hey, 
go ahead and scroll that thing into view. And now you've got uh, got all the features that you would expect your page to have. So to recap, Virtualizer is actually very usable right now and very useful right now as a tool to virtualize element rendering. Um, it is intended to be a low level primitive. So you could build uh, elements on top of this and behaviors on top of this to do uh, your basic you know, news feed and infant scrolling and, and whatever comes to mind. Um, you know, we, we think it's usable. Uh, we're still working to get everything kind of covered test-wise. This is one of those um, kind of, uh, this is one of those components that has a lot of performance, uh, it, you know, impacts. So we're trying to do a lot to stress test it and get really good performance measurements and understand what those edge cases are. Um, so, you know, bugs still come in, but it is very usable right now. And we'd love to get more feedback on your use cases to, so we can make better uh, decisions as we stabilize the API. And uh, that's pretty much it. So thanks for your time.